Alright, so I got this piece and I'm ready to keep going. So let's just grab everything else and make sure it has a material. And I think that's everything. Even on the inside, we've got everything for this. Let's do bolt and this ramp. Okay, here we go. So we got. Let's see. Select this. And I think that's the bullet. Alright, this is the barrel. So the barrel needs to be. Let's pick a tin metal. And the bullet. Is there a bullet in here? There should be. So we'll grab those and just make it um, bullet. So we'll call it bullet. And let's duplicate that to there and separate it. And now, all right, that's good. Actually, we'll just delete this bullet for now. We'll do it later. Let's go back to material preview. And this is looking pretty good for not having any real texture. So I think that means we can continue um, continue texturing. So I wanted to give this a little bit of a greenish tint right here. I'm seeing that. So let's make sure we have our lower mag. And we'll bring it like that. Make it green. Something like something like that. Just uh, like a hint of green. We change the HDRI. Still looking, looking good. I'm gonna make it a little bit stronger. But let's go back to this. Alright, and now we should actually start texturing, like uh, add some roughness variation and stuff like that. So I'm going to open up, where is it? I've got a folder in here called Material Library, Image Textures, Textures. So I got a whole bunch of grunge textures here, um, I shot these myself, so uh, it's not that hard to create grunge textures, just, you know, take a picture of something random and turn it into black and white. So I want to grab, um, let's see, I want to grab this grunge right here. See how it looks? Make sure we have object, coordinates, and box mapping. And let's go to our references. So you can see there's some like splotches it looks like. And let's turn up the tiling. Hold shift. Alright, let's just keep it keep it at one. Alright, and I'm gonna Do a combine XYZ, plug that into there, set it all to one, and now I'm going to group this and just plug it all into there. We'll set this as the scale. 
And we'll call this call this grunge one. Or grunge one. Alright, so now we've got a little node to control the tiling. And let's start off with introducing it to the roughness. So we'll add a mix RGB. Mix RGB. And take a look at this. Currently, oh wait, that's the spec. So, mix RGB, bring it to the roughness. We've got it at 0.3, and this is. So, if we look here, that's what it looks like. So, we should probably we could try overlay. Let's grab that. So immediately that gives us some nice variation. Turn it off and on. And that's just giving us some rougher spots. You can really see it right there, how it's working. Alright, let's try to tile it just a little bit more. Actually, Okay, well actually we'll just keep it at 1 because I don't want it to be obvious. We'll make it subtle, at least for now. Maybe like... Okay, I think that's good. And let's take a look at our color channel. So, I'm going to add a Currently our color channel is just like all black, so we'll do mix, RGB, bring this into here, then we'll try to isolate that, and we can just mix. So that's one, that's zero, let's try overlay again. Something like that. Let's view our material. You can see what it's doing. So I'm going to bring it up to like 0.5 again. For spec, we could try having it influence the spec. see how that looks. So we'll just set this to to zero. It's going to make some some parts more specular, which I don't really see that on the gun, so I'm going to Keep it very low. And for the normal, uh, I don't want this grunge texture to affect the normal channel, so let's scale those to zero on the X. Then we'll do Shift P, and that's like a second layer of our material, or third, I guess. So we got our base values and then a basic noise and now a grunge and then this is that final color output so let next up let's do some some like edgeware so I'm gonna do file append go to where is it material library blends procedurals change this to material actually node tree and I want to grab 
edgeware image based and the edge layer image base and now let's look at our curvature right, make sure we got to separate it out we can look at all three levels that we baked out I'm thinking I'm gonna go with level level two so then we'll do map range so this node takes a like a zero to one edge mask so what we can do is turn our curvature into an edge mask like that and these artifacts right there don't look good so let's just cut them out further Or what we can do instead is we could do a color ramp. Let's try this. We want to set halfway to black. That's essentially doing the same thing. So, all right, there we go. We'll plug this into our input edge texture. And now we need to plug in an image. So I'm going to go to, let's try, um, maybe Grunge 2. All right, I think Grunge 2 is good. Do it, put image texture. But then we also want to introduce some scratches. And I actually updated this, so let me open up a new Blender instance. Uh, M18 rendering is what I want to open up. So let's see, open M18 rendering. So this was uh, another project I did just a couple weeks ago with the same techniques that I'm teaching in this I don't know be these videos I just let it load um, this might take a little bit all right there we go so just grab anything let's go to object and here we go, Edgeware Image Base. So, what I did is I did an unclamped output. So, just call create a value, and we'll just call this unclamped. If we look at that, uh, not very impressive. But what we need to do is map range. I believe. and bring this down with the same thing we clamped it to and now it's smooth instead of um, harsh so let's just add that into the node group so we'll do a map range and we want to take the clamp and just put that in the negative so now we can look at the unclamped one And let's make sure this is mapped properly. So we want object box you know, 0.25. Now with this, we can scale it up. Let's try that one Let's 
just try negative one to one. Set the tiling back to one, maybe like two. Turn the clamp up. Alright, and another thing, I have, I made some textures, where are they, they're in my M18, somewhere in here, alright, that one's useful, uh, but I'm looking for scratch maps I baked out. Where the heck are they? Let's just search. Not really organized right now. So scratch. Yeah, let's see where this is. Texture scratches. Okay, they're right here. I think somewhere alright these are the ones I want so grab these and actually I might just want to make a new a new scratch texture so I'm going to save this and open up my bump baker scene. Okay, so here's the the scratch the scratch like generator, I guess. So we need to change the material to Right now it's just at zero, but grab that and do a map range from zero to or actually let's just change it to what is it this right here? H one. There's one of these. Okay, right, this material. So this has the what we need to bake. So we'll set scratches paste. Set that to the bottom. And this to the top. Right now. Let's reset the rotation and hide that. Go to layer three, reset the rotation of these. Go to layer one. Let's go to layer three and clear parent. And go to layer two. We'll just delete like half of these put them to the and now
said that big zero. Now I want to well, first make this skinnier. So we got some skinnier scratches going on. Bring them to the center. And do randomize transform. Do a random rotation just a little bit like that. and a random location and then I want to um, where's the option to like scale without changing the scale I know that was an option in 2.79 but transform maybe it's this It's got to be an option here. Um, blender scale only location. See, that's what it used to be right there. So that's in the median point menu, which is here. that button right there. Shortcuts are alt period. Oh my god. Where did it go? I have an I have an idea though, so you can scale it in and press Alt S. Yeah, that that works. Alright, now let's go to the front. And I also want to make these scratches smaller. So we'll do individual origins. And scale them in, duplicate, um, rotate, randomize, transform. All right, now they look really curvy, so let's. Can you multi-edit a curve? Alright, so yeah, we'll just grab all of these. Hit tab. And scale them in so they're less curvy. Oh, maybe scale them up just a little bit. But Now... Randomize transform. Make sure we apply scale. Alright, now that looks like a decent scratch map. Let's make sure it's um I want to change the thickness of all of these, so SY Or just GY something like that 
Okay. And let's make that top. And at the bottom. And render this out. Make sure we only have um, turn that collection off. Hit F12. All right, now let's try adding that to our edgeware. So image, save as MP7 extreme scratch is. one.exr. Alright, let's go back here. Go to this and go back to our MP7 text string. Little scratches. And I want little bitty scratches to come out. That's gonna be the goal. So what we can do is Let's go mix RGB. First off, let's take these and make sure we have box mapping applied. And make sure the scale is you know something good. I thought I said this to object. Alright, that's too much. Alright, and now I want to do add. And now we can see we got some scratches coming off. Let's clamp this image. Make sure it's not. Alright, and let's size it up. They literally just everywhere. Alright, so maybe we should add it to scratch map and try seeing that result. Yeah, that works better. So let's turn off that. Let's see there are just what our scratches look like. I don't know why it um, does this. It's for it. All right, so looks like there's way too many. Let's clamp this too.
Alright, now let's go back to Eevee. And I want more breakup. So let's try Grunge 1. Do RGB curves. Let's bring some contrast like this. Now we can do a, like an overlay. So we got that's the first image, that's the second image, and that's a mix between the two. Let's try let's try to just mix. Alright, so now we got this kind of edge we're going on, but this doesn't really make sense for this material, so we'll copy it and do it on the Picatinny rail. So let's grab this and copy. And then I want to do work on the Picatinny. Where is that material editor? Picatinny. So. Then we'll hold up. Just froze up. Alright, paste. And just change the input map. Actually, it's the same object, so it doesn't matter. And let's look how it looks on here. Make sure we're using this. Alright, so now let's paint in where we want it to. Actually, first let's add a. Let's add grunge. Just a grunge texture. To give this some more variation. So let's pull up our reference. Where was it? I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find one. I think it was this one. So yeah, you can see it's got this kind of texture over it. So let's that looks good. So let's grab our albedo. I don't want to give it kind of a like a reddish orange tint. So we'll do color ramp. Make this a little bit red. Then we'll do a mix RGB. So right now we've got this color. And if we mix it, now we got just a little bit. 
like that. Now let's add it to the roughness. So keep the speculator the same for now. And change the roughness to. Alright, so we're starting off with a low value like that. And this is a pretty bright texture. So we can try overlay. So that's just going to add some some bright spots really. So I don't think we have anything below 0.5 in this texture. So it's going to be more rough splotches. And let's try that. That looks pretty good. I think we should maybe tone down the saturation just a little bit. Alright, and let's see. Let's add in that edgeware. So we can grab this. And let's make sure we have our layering system like in order. So that'll be our first layer of material definition. And now we'll add this edgeware on top. So anywhere we want this, or anywhere where this edgeware is. So yeah, you can see we're going to have to like paint this in. Or maybe what we could do is we take this largest one, do a map range like that, and just come out like that. We'll do mix RGB. And then we'll multiply it. So, multiply, and we'll have an effect like that. So, where before we had like problems with this bleeding out, especially in cycles, you could see it was like real bad. Now, if we multiply it, it'll kind of stay under control. So that works pretty well. But obviously we don't want this everywhere. So we're gonna just gonna paint in where we want it. Right, right now let's think about how we want this edgeware. Probably want So we want to mix RGB, right? We want it to be brighter. Um, so let's group, let's group this, and we'll just call this edge wear back one, right, because that's our layer. We want it to add our, add to our albedo, so it's just a little bit brighter. and subtract from our roughness so that it's glossier on the edges and that's our spec so whoops so just put that in there instead spec can be the same and normal will be just be the same for now All right frame those and see how that looks so we can turn up, turn up the, the wear amount. All right. So now we've got an effect like that. Let's 
full screen at. But it's not very subtle. And it's not implied like intelligently, so let's turn it up just a little bit actually. Make sure we're clamping this. We don't want it to go overboard, so let's we'll turn it up. Slightest bit. And maybe I clamp that too. Alright, that's too too glossy. That. We can try this bigger one. That'll make it bigger. If we did that, that would be the biggest. Oops. Undo. I think the smallest one looks the best in this scenario. Alright, so now what we can do is we can cut that. So it's like that. And if we wanted to, we could even do the normal, just a slight, slight bit. So let's grab a bump node. Let's just try this out and put it in the height, invert it because right now it's uh, black and white. So we have this, you can see it's a black and white mask. So if we grab that, we want to set it to 0.001, something like very, very low. Like that's even probably too high. 0 0.05 and set the strength down to like 0.1 so it like hardly makes a difference all right now let's paint it in so let's create a new image texture and just click new and let's name this Let's call this uh, Picatinny 3. So that's what layer it is. And we'll call this Picatinny 3 Mix. And let's make it 4K. And we don't need it to be 32 bit because it's just a black and white mask. Let's set it to linear though. So now you can see it's deleted all of it. And now we want to go to this tool settings and let's duplicate this. Okay, let's actually just hold up, just delete it. Duplicate everything, rotate it 90 degrees. Duplicate it again, rotate it 180 degrees. And now let's isolate this go into texture paint make and let's pull up our Picatinny 3 mix and now make sure we have Picatinny selected in our materials Picatinny 3 mix change this to the paintbrush uh, make sure we're painting with white and that looks good all right now we should be able to hold up our texture paint mode what is that painting on? Right, so it did paint, let's discard it oh okay I know what the problem is so this has mirrored UVs right here so let's just grab it and bring it to there and now if we go to texture paint what the heck okay let's 
grab that, put those back where they were, and we'll try this one. So we'll go to texture paint, turn on the mask. Why is it not working? Let's change this to the image editor too. Texture paint, packaging. Alright, this is really frustrating. Let's change this to paint mode. So we can definitely paint on on here. But it's not showing through on our material. Like it is on cycles. Okay, so let's Turn off that, maybe. It's just. Alright, so it is doing something, but it's not. It's not rendering what I want it to. So. I want it to just show the mix, not whatever this is. Let's reload. All the textures, make sure. Alright, now let's go to texture paint. Oh man. So, this is just a problem with EV not wanting to show us the proper viewport for some reason. I don't know what his deal is. Texture paint. Like if we go to cycles, it's not showing either. But it's clearly painted on. Over our UVs. Okay. Oh, it's because the vector. Whoops. Alright, that was a really stupid mistake. So, let's put in our UV map. Alright, this should work just fine now. Make sure we're using regular UV map. Let's turn that to black. Now we'll do mix RGB, uh, multiply. So this is adding a black mask. Let's go back to EV. All right, now we can paint. All right, that was just my bad. So let's view our output. And we should have let me see so we have this one right here and let's make sure we're clamped that's clamped because I don't know if it is so we want that to be in the bottom and this to be at the top and multiply with a factor of one and now if we look at this all right here finally the magic should happen Let's center around that and paint in some edge wear. Alright, there we go. Alright, that's what I wanted to happen. Alright, let's do it on the other edge too.
And we can change our... Look at our brush real quick. Stroke. Fall off. Maybe it's in options. What does it clue do? Only paint. Alright, so let's just keep painting. We can paint on everything that has this material. Alright, so let's just turn off the mask. And now we'll go to the top, pick a tinny rail, so let's go into edit mode. Select that and do Shift H and make sure we're all right. So actually, let's go to object mode and paint on this one. Texture paint. All right, so we'll paint on there, and there, and press X to. Change the black and that'll erase. Alright, and let's unhide this. Oh, press tab. And we'll just center around here, paint on this one, make sure this one has, uh, you know, some wear since it's right on, uh, it's right on this one, it's getting used a lot, let's put some wear on the bottom too, and another thing we could do, Let's go in this edgeware, or where is it? Right here. We could try adding a new image texture. Alright, so let's call this new Picatinny 3 uh, Edgeware Extras. So, anywhere that, like maybe right here, we want some more, but uh, our curvature isn't allowing us, so let's try adding some more to it. So we'll just set that to add and clamp. So let's set that to linear. And now we want to be working with our extras. This one right here. So now, if we paint, you can see it's, it's applying the edgeware. And let's turn off our, or turn this closer. So on up. Oh dang it! That was a mistake. So let's go to final normal and discard go back to this is Picatinny extra wear edges make sure we have that selected and now why is it keep wanting to paint on that I don't have that selected I don't think in any capacity let's discard this all right there we go so now you can see we can what the heck why does it keep switching to this like I I can't even like fathom a reason. Now it's 
adding to receiver curvature, what the heck? We only want to paint on this one. Is there a way to force it to do that? Alright, so wish we could also move these up and down the list. Let's just do A to Z. So now we can switch between Picatinny Mix. So I don't want any edge wear here. Maybe just in that corner. So like there and there. And if we need to tone it up or tone it down, we can with this right here. So dang it. it seems pressing X is changing it for some reason. I have no idea why it's doing that, but let's keep working on our just general kind of edge wear. So let's go make sure these these have it right here too. Alright, something like that. And this front one definitely needs it. And same with right on this. Alright, and probably yeah, delete it off of that and paint on here. All right, let's do this rail. So I'm gonna put put some right there. And now this is where we can use our edgeware extra. Just make sure it's not. I'm gonna double click this. So 100% on here. What? I just changed my brush size and it went back. See that? Alright, I don't know why it's doing that. It seems to be some sort of bug. So. Uh, let's go back to Edgeware Extras. Change our brush size to be small. All right now, I'm gonna paint some extra wear. Okay, that looks good. Let's do the same thing on the other side, which didn't bake as sharp for some reason, even though I'm pretty sure I set that, whatever. I don't feel like changing it. So we'll go to Edgeware Extra and Uh, 
I can see why people diss you know the texturing capabilities of Blender even though it's got like the tools you need it's just like what is going on usually I don't like to diss Blender because it's a great program but this is just kind of ridiculous right now so put some right there and on the top too I don't want to put like a whole long row of it because that'll look kind of bad I think especially where it's like completely worn off you know what I mean like this is going down to the bare metal so don't want to overdo it with this effect and it's easy to overdo right, let's do the same thing on let's grab like maybe this one Just kind of pick some out. Maybe these ones got used for like a red dot site or something. Focus on this and I think that's good for okay let's try adding some here and probably here too Alright, so I didn't bake a curvature map for this. So that's because I had to bake this afterwards, so we're gonna have to grab this one. I'm just gonna change my brush. Make sure I'm. Alright, so I'm gonna go to the mix first and paint it all in. So if we look at the mix. There should be edgeware on here. And same with that. Now I'm going to go to the extras. Make sure to paint in on here. Alright, actually, I'm just going to go to the mix and paint it out of the middle like that. And that looks good, because this one doesn't have like proper UVs since I had to do it after, so it doesn't have all the maps. Alright, that looks good to me. This one... Okay, let's save and we'll save changes to view mode image save as let's go to texturing create a new folder we'll call this uh I don't know like working or something and 8-bit PNG is good because it's only black and white so save and I also want to save the Pick a tinny one, this one. Does it even have anything on it? Uh, Pick a tinny, it were extras. I didn't really have to use that one too much to for get down here. So I'm thinking, like, is it even worth having? I 
like what if we just disabled it? Actually, I like I, I like what it does there, so I'm gonna save it. Image save as. Right, we already saved this one, so we need to save the other one. Image save as. Save the PNG. All right, now I'm going to reload the images and continue working on this material. So let's look at our Picatinny. So I want to add, like if we look at our, I want all the edges to have just a little bit. Uh, a little bit more brightness, so let's take a look at that. I don't, that's too extreme. So we'll create a new one, we'll call it Edge Square. Just grab that node, uh, take our grunge, and one I think is good enough, and make sure to grab a curvature. So let's make space for another layer. We'll plug this into the input texture. And let's see, where is. We want to separate these out. Clamp needs to come up, it looks like. Right, so now we got most of the edges. So, let's see what that looks like unclamped. And we'll do a map range. Let's see if I can. See if we can. Just cut some of this out. Well, that's just the same as pulling this up. So, let's try the medium ones. Alright, let's add that. So, if we look at our material, I just want these edges to catch more light. So we could try see a mix. Let's add all our mix RGBs here, here, here. And we don't want anything to affect the bump. Make it like a layer. And I'm gonna do unclamped. Let's just try the spec first. See if it's worth doing anything to the spec. So we'll keep it at zero for now. And our spec is set at 0.5. And we want to add this. So the edges will have more specular. So if we add it, so you can even tell. You honestly can't even tell. Uh, I guess you need that a little bit like right there on the rim. You'll see it's catching more light. So yeah, we'll just add that. And then for the roughness, we want to subtract it because we want it to be glossier. So we'll do the same. Same thing. But subtract. Make sure to clamp, clamp these. And now we should be able to take a look at this. I think the problem is, is that we should use that. Right now you can definitely see it. Right. 
so yeah, those catch more light. And the problem, we don't want it to be black, just white. Just like that. Let's check that out. So, there's be before, after. I want to like just increase it just a little bit. See, that's too much, it's already like, we like that. I think they already catch enough light as it is, so let's try adding the color. So now we got some more subtle edgeware on here. There's a before and after, you can kind of see it. And bump will leave the same. Same thing with uh, roughness. Alright, and let's add some directional scratches with a scratch brush. So we'll do a new image texture. So image texture, create a new black one, 4K, we'll just call this directional scratches. And we'll put it under Picatinny. Alright, and set it to linear. And now we want it to add on the color. Probably um, add to the roughness too. These are like I don't think they're gonna make it all the way down to the metal. And and then we'll see about bump later. Alright, so now let's go to the texture workspace or whatever it's called, texture paint mode, and create a new brush. We can call this scratch brush and it is a fake user so it won't get deleted now let's go to textures and let me find my textures they're in the m18 project I made these okay right, so we want to definitely add this one so let's, co let's copy that and let's open up MP7 texturing one. Definitely want this decal because this is a good one. Um, we want it scratch. All right, that's a good one that I made. Same thing with this. So we're just going to grab all these scratch brushes, one, two, so from here to here, and we're going to make brushes for it. So let's copy these and paste them in here. Now we'll copy that path and let's make sure we're, all right, so now we want to create a new texture. We'll call this scratch one and open up that path and we want to grab I guess scratches two. Now I'll go back to the brush settings. Change this to anchored. 
texture mask to texture and where's the icon for brushes let me just look this up Blender, texture, paint, custom, icon. Okay, so it's in under display right underneath fall off. So, fall off. Where the heck is display? Sculpting and painting, brush, display. I mean, it's got to be in here. Custom properties? No. No. Where the heck is it? <sighs> All right, I want to skip get the icon all right so he makes his icon all right how did he do that Alright, how does he do this? Alright, so maybe there is just no display for texture painting. That's kind of disappointing, but whatever. Let's try this. Alright, so we need to set the this to view plane. Um. Maybe it's, no, not stencil. I think it's just view plane, right? It's still acting as if it's just tiled, though. View plane, come on. So we can see that our brush is there, but it's not working for some reason. It just seems like it's half working. Let's delete the texture for now. And it's still painting the texture? Why? 
Oh, okay, so we want to delete this texture and just have it as a texture mask. Alright, there we go. So that's exactly what we wanted. But we might want to change it to... So let's scratch, we'll call this one scratch one. And duplicate this, call it scratch two. And change this to new one. And we want to open up this is the scratch. So now we can Oh my god. Call the scratch two. Instead of texture mask, let's try texture or turn off the texture. Right, there we go. So now we can paint some scratches on here. Let's do just a little bit to the Let's just try adding it just to the the rougher roughness right now. All right, so we'll change to the think it's any directional scratches, and now let's just add some on here. All right, and let's go into edit mode and mask this okay so now we got some scratches let's grab that one too And now we can we can actually just duplicate these out. Take a look at this. Maybe we don't want to have it quite so rough. Okay, so we got some more scratches on here. Because this is going to be slid through the that thing all the time, you know. So it would have these. Just kind of paint them on. Try to vary it up. Let's look how that came out. So. I'll delete those and now just look at this. So we can add a little bit to the albedo channel, but not too much. And just a little bit to the roughness. All right, let's do the other side too. So we'll rotate this around. And now go to texture paint. L. Make sure we grab the whole thing. And we'll paint some scratches.
Alright, and... I think I want to remove some from here, so... Let's go back into texture paint. Make sure we grab that. And we'll change the color. Um, let's just go to a texture draw brush and erase these. And I'll redo them. So, scratch two, I think. Yeah, scratch two. Painting these on. I think I'm just gonna paint them on like right here because that really gets used a lot. Same with right there. And probably the end here too. And I'll change back to our draw. Kind of paint these out. Just get some some subtle ones in. That looks good to me, so let's save. Save that as a bit PNG again. And this is interesting right here. So, this baked wrong, but I mean, it's pretty obvious too, right? So, what I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure these faces here and here have the exact same normals so what I could do is I'm gonna save before I do this but I'm gonna grab okay right, first I'm gonna grab these and isolate them then I'm gonna grab these islands do they have I'm thinking like maybe we could mirror this so let's let's just try it so we've got LL scroll plus Shift D, uh, Control M X, Shift N, Merge by Distance, and now let's go to Material Preview. All right, so it's going to cause a seam right there. So let's just undo that, or I'll just go back to what we had. Don't save. We saved the images we need to. Anyone that was not saved was probably like um, when it was bugging out and kept switching it to normal. All right, let's keep working on. Um, this receiver material. So. I want to put a scuff right there. So I think. But before we do that, we could probably uh, do some more procedurals for this material. So, by that I just mean like not hand painted. All right, so I'm gonna append um, I'm just gonna append everything, and I'll look at my group and try. I'm going to try dots one. So put that there. Put this in the roughness, this in the normal. And hook these back up. And then I'll frame these to make it like a layer. Alright, let's take a look at our maps. So you can see, 
what that does. I want to increase the... Okay, let's look at the roughness. Maybe that'll be more obvious. Increase the scale, just like... that much. And actually, let's keep it at 1. So, first, albedo. Okay. Roughness. Probably better to look at this in material view. Alright, the normal, I don't think this needs any normal, but we could view it anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna go with no, unnormal. Okay, so if we mute, we can see before. And unmute, we can see after. It's just some more, like very slight. Stuff going on. And. I want to take these, and I think I'm going to make them the Picatinny material, so we'll grab that, let's see, that and that, let's see what it looks like. Alright, I'm going to undo that, we'll just make them darker. Or actually, we'll just reduce the spec. Because it's already pretty much as dark as it can go. So, yeah, let's add some of these scuffs right here. So, actually, let's add some edge wear first. So, I'm going to grab Picatinny. Where was it? I think it's this one. Which one do we want first? Let's copy this. And go back to the receiver and paste it. Okay, that wasn't what we wanted. Make sure to copy everything. Control C. Control V. See what that looks like. Let's just take a look at the curvature map by itself. Alright, so that's our output. What if we used the largest setting? Alright, that's just like way too much. Alright, I'm gonna use that, I think. Let's try unclamped too. And we'll group this up. Make sure we go outside the group. And now let's add that to our material. So. I 
I guess you can see like right there. There really shouldn't be a lot of wear on this gun, but it'll be more interesting if there is. You can definitely see it right there. So it's a little bit brighter and a little bit um, looks rougher because you can see here's the reflection and it looks rougher to me. So let's just add our mix RGB. And we want to, what does our color look like? Our color was basically black, so we'll add to the color, make sure we're clamping. Just like pretty subtle. And let's try that. That actually works all right because because it's going to be subtle anyway. So like maybe that much. Yeah, like really, really subtle. And now let's go to the roughness. Let's put this back in order. And on the roughness, I want to add also. Like something like that. And we'll see that. Alright, I think that's good. Let's start adding some hand painted scuffs. So, we'll just layer that. So, yeah. Keeping it like this helps uh, keep it organized and also I think it'll uh, keep it simpler for anybody who's uh, maybe just starting like texturing in Blender. If you, uh, you haven't done a lot of this before, this should help, like, uh, you know, it's just like having a layer system, except for it's all exposed, where this is your top layer and that's your bottom. And, I mean, you even have all the same, you know, blending modes as a layer-based program. So, alright, let's add another image texture. And all right, I'm gonna stop it here, and we'll pick this up later. But you know, this is a pretty good base. How long have we been going? An hour and forty minutes. So you know, not bad for an hour and forty minutes. Like really. And this wasn't smart materials uh, or anything so and it's not like we uh, are using materials that I've just already built like smart materials I've already built because that would speed up things incredibly but I want to show you how to like do it from scratch so yeah things are looking good Hopefully we can really bring this up to a like a really good level of detail and uh, stay tuned.